Welcome back, Blade fans. Uh, after uh, a short reprieve that I had uh, over the holiday holiday weekend, the long holiday weekend for Thanksgiving 2022. Not that that means anything to you one way or the other, but, you know, we all need a little bit of downtime. So <clears throat> here I am back with something that I picked up on Black Friday. And... Um, this knife usually goes for significantly over a hundred, and I managed to pick it up for eighty bucks. And I think that's what uh, some of the reviewers were saying uh, they thought that it should be worth or th that you should pay. Still, it's an interesting and useful knife. <clears throat> it is a purpose-designed blade. It is a fixed blade. It is designed by a gentleman by the name of Greg Thompson who invented a program called Special Operations Combatives Program. And he teaches uh, many in the armed forces how to use uh, procedures and implements to defend oneself, particularly in tactical or combat situations, whether that's a SWAT team or whether that's um, SEALs or uh, Army Rangers or what have you. <clears throat> I am not sure of his particular unit within the armed forces. But this is interesting. It's been out for a while. I had one a while ago that was in the double-edged form. This one, as you can see, I think, is in single-edged, although it has a swedge here that makes it look like it is a dagger grind, and indeed it is a kind of a bayonet dagger grind. They incorporated some teeth, so we've got some EDC usefulness to this in cutting strapping material, webbing material, anything tough, because you've got basically a very steep grind to this narrow blade. So we don't have a whole lot of fine edge here, although I've honed this on a strop, and I'm not going to attempt to slice any paper with it, but I've got it pretty much shaving sharp right there. So um, holding it in a standard position, you can cut with it, you can slash with it, you can thrust with it. Now, the um, scabbard is specialty in that, let's see if I can back out a little more, yeah. The scabbard has been changed from the original and to have a little better claw here because what was happening with the original was the uh, they put I think a standard kind of upturn at the end of the clip and when people were trying to pull it off the uh, if they attached it to a vest or you had it in your pocket or even if you hung it from your neck um, probably not if you hung it from your neck because that's not going to give way but the whole thing came out alright so the whole sheath came out which isn't cool what you want to do is be able to get the dagger out by the ring and I don't really have room to flip it here in front of the camera but if you pull it out this way then what you're going to do is roll it into your hand that way and uh, I set it up so that I pull it out with the right hand and have that edge inward so that I can do the pakal or pikal techniques meaning jab and rip Okay, and it was devised to be able to be held in the hand while still holding a flashlight or a gun or whatever and not lose it. So if you're thinking karambit with this, it's not really the same. Not everything with a ring is necessarily comes under the karambit uh, heading because with a karambit, we're going to want the ring out ahead a little bit so that the blade lines up. And the karambit is best held if you listen to uh, instruction from either Doug, Doug Markaita or Sebastian Coves or somebody who uses a lot of rings on their knives. It works best here. But you can see if you hold it there, I've got too much of a cant. And although it's good for this way, I can't jab in that direction because the point is down too far. But if I break my rules and go all the way up to the knuckle on this and use this heavily jimped end to lock my thumb over, 
I can get it pretty much 90 degrees right here to the forearm and that's where you want it if you're going to jab away from you to keep somebody off so Greg Thompson designed this to be able to be an intermediary while you get your firearm out while you get uh, some other serious weapon engaged but as a civilian if this is all you got it's going to make a pretty handy self-defense tool for sure you got about a three inch or three and a half inch overall blade there depending upon where you measure it from and uh, it can be used even in libre fighting although they don't like the ring um, jab and rip uh, jab this way to keep someone away or if you pulled it out and you decided to hold it in this position you've got these nice finger grooves that are going to allow you to hold it kind of on a diagonal saber grip for thrusting so you've got good ability with this with a, the ring in your palm for backup to jab you could put your pinky through it I'm not real comfortable negotiating my grip to renegotiating it to get my my pinky in there. You got some heavy jimping on both sides here so you can pinch it with the ring through the finger or not. I find this to be pretty useful. Um, but the main purpose of the ring is to extract it from the sheath and to hold it securely in the hand. So you may or may not be a proponent of the ring. That's certainly your personal choice. But you know, you should have a methodology be, before we make comments about what works and what doesn't work. You really got to try it. You got to practice it. And there is a trainer for this for 80 bucks. It's in red and it's got a dull tip and a dull edge, which is a really great idea. Anytime you can get a trainer for a knife, I know I have a... Um, protect yourself um, uh, TPY I think it is uh, from Bastinelli that is uh, comes with a plastic trainer it's uh, about a five and a half inch fixed blade Tonto so it's a good thing to have and the trainer fits right in the same sheath so whatever sheath you ended up getting with the live blade you can put that trainer in there so uh, some quick measurements should you need them this is not going to be your standard sort of uh, fixed blade. Uh, it measures overall seven and a quarter inches from tip to the jumping at the end of the ring. Um, actual sharpened edge is two and a half inches. And uh, if we determine the, the blade length that's actually going to be useful for thrusting into a target, two and three quarters want to call it three that's fine but then you get up onto the jimping um, pretty thick blade stock and by the way it's 440 C for its purposes that's all you need um, we're not going to be you know cutting stuff up EDCing this knife every day but certainly you can get away with using the serrations or the edge in a pinch um, we don't have a different handle thickness from uh, blade stock thickness it is the same because it's a skeletonized bare bones knife, 0.18 inches, which works out to be 4.6 millimeters. We have a weight of the knife itself of only 2 ounces, 2.06. If we put it in the sheath, and by the way, it's a molded plastic. I'm not sure what it is, like an ABS or something. It uh, looks like it's pretty tough. If we weigh it with a sheath, then we're going to get 3.1 ounces. Okay? So there's all your vital statistics. It sits very deep in this sheath. It's flat. It can be lashed. The clip can be put into molly setups on a vest, on your belt. I like to carry this appendix uh, carry on an angle, and it still works. In fact, I have a hard time getting it, that sheath out after I put it in because it's got a claw now that grabs pretty well. 
And you could even put this in uh, the summertime in your shorts. You could put it in your swim trunks. It's going to go in right up to there. And all you're going to see is that ring. And it doesn't really look like a knife. And very easy to extract it using the ring. There is a little piece that they put on this one and on the, um, the mini, I think. I'm not sure if it fits both or just one. It's like a little leather paddle here that keeps this off of you because if you're wearing it against bare skin it's possible that this can uh, irritate you just a little bit it's pretty heavily jimped but that does give you that nice lock up there and if you hold it this way that's also a striking surface it's a skinny little knife you don't have a whole lot to hang on to which is another reason the ring is good now in this sock P program Benchmade has also created a folder, and uh, yes, this is the original Sock P folder. There is a newer version out with an axis lock. This is the liner locking version. I think both knives are uh, D2. This one certainly is, and this is a long blade for a folder. This thing comes in over four inches but it's designed to be used with all the same tactics that's four and a half inches with a overall length of uh, almost ten and a quarter this one's got a glass breaker on the end it's very slender it um, has a clip that you can totally deep carry if you put it on the uh, the pivot side and before you dis that it's actually pretty good because pulling it out of the pocket like that, right, using this uh, interesting clip with a hole in it that's designed to help you reorient it, um, you got your thumb right there for that thumb disc. So it's not a bad idea, but if you don't like that, you can put it on either side of the, uh, the pommel of the knife. It's just that, uh, yeah, it, it's going to be pretty deep carry. You know, you're going to have a little bit more sticking out here than on that side. Now, I don't know if they changed that whole setup or not on the newer version, which has a little different uh, milling on the handle, I think. This one's pretty got a pretty good grip with the, uh, the G10 that's uh, heavily textured. So that is the folding version. You can see once you get a folding version, you got a lot more knife. But this is still going to deploy faster, I believe. Also, the reason I got this in the single edge is it does make it legal with the blade length and the single edge uh, where I live. So that's helpful to know does come in a full dagger double edge without the serrations and I think they may have one other version of the blade grind not sure on that now um, quick compare of the sock P dagger fixed blade with another fixed blade I like a whole lot this is the Bastinelli, and this is the Tellum, which means spear, I believe. And look at that. Just about the same length. Full double edge on this one, very wide. Look how wide that dagger blade is with a fuller down the middle on the Tellum. I find this very comfortable to uh, hold and use. And I think I got to back out again. And this one's got um, your choice. You got a smooth edge or a partially serrated edge. He did a great job on this design. Bastion Coves, tactical art designer and knife maker. And here's another very favorite small fixed blade. This is the Williams. Japanese styled, and I'm not going to call it a Tonto. It's the Osorako Zukuri Mini Kaiken. Okay, so it's a Kaiken styled.
fixed blade. And it's coming in pretty much. All three of these are really almost dead on for size. Got about a three and a half inch single edge blade here. Really nicely done out of uh, Sleepner steel. And this is made by Lion Steel for the Williams Blade Company. This was designed by Chris Williams, the son of James Williams. Nice Kydex sheath on both of these. And if we were to compare it with a commonly known folder, there it is against the Griptilian. About an inch and a quarter longer on the Griptilian. Way different, way different blade use and purpose. So again, a dedicated combat tactical knife for the military, for law enforcement. Great backup to a firearm. Good intermediary step if you know the tactics. And again, that is the Sock P Dagger. Hope you enjoyed this kind of re-review and overview of this particular knife. And uh, maybe it's something you can use. Maybe it's something you're just going to gloss over and say interesting and, you know, doesn't fit into my daily carry, which is completely understandable. Okay, but don't forget to like it and subscribe. I'll be back soon.